Welcome back to Magician Recaps Explains. Today, we're diving into the dark and twisted world of Morbius, where horror meets the vampirism in unforgettable ways. We'll recap a film that's sure to send shivers down your spine. Buckle up, because things are about to get grim. The movie begins at a hospital in Greece. Michael Morbius, Jared Leto, a 10-year-old boy, welcomes his surrogate brother, Lucian, whom he renames Milo, Matt Smith. They bond over their shared blood illness, which is due to a missing piece of their DNA, and desire to be normal like any other person. They are frequently made fun of, or even bullied by other kids. Morbius can only walk with the help of crutches, same as Milo. Dr. Emil Nicholas, Jared Harris, is a mentor and father figure for Michael and Milo, who runs a facility that looks after people with incurable illnesses. On a certain day at the hospital, Milo asks Morbius what he would do if he can walk normally for an hour, which left Morbius mute. Suddenly, Milo blood transfusion machine malfunctions, which made him to go unconscious. Fortunately Morbius fixed it within a second, making Milo to feel better again. Impressed with Morbius' talent and gift, hospital director, Nicholas arranges for Morbius to attend medical school for gifted children in New York, since Morbius is a gifted student, and can fix complex machines with the simplest of ease. While he focuses on caring for Milo, he then admits he can't watch Morbius' talent go waste. Meanwhile, Morbius and Milo needs blood transfusions three times a day to stay alive, till the time the DNA fix required is identified and implemented. Morbius unwillingly leaves, but promises Milo that, one day he will find a cure for their condition. While reading Morbius' letter, the wind blew it away, so he tries to go and get it. A group of kids were reading the letter. Milo politely asked them to get him his letter back, but suddenly, they started making fun of him. Milo gets angry and used his crutches on one of the kids. They also started beating him up, until Nicholas comes to his rescue. 25 years later, Morbius publicly declines a Nobel Prize for his work for making an artificial blood, which has saved more lives than penicillin. Morbius rejects the award, as he says that, artificial blood was the result of a failed experiment and thus not praiseworthy. His colleague, Martin Bancroft, Adria Arjona, gets to know he has secretly captured dozens of vampire bats, from Costa Rica, in the hope of splicing their genes with his own to cure his condition. Bats drink blood, and have special anticoagulants to help digest it. Vampire bats have the ability to bring down predators, which are ten times their own size. By ingesting bat DNA into his own, Morbius believes to develop the same anticoagulants in his body and cure his condition. Bancroft tries to tell him to stop pushing himself so hard, but he insists they take a bigger risk, because without it, there's no science. Morbius tries the DNA splicing on a mouse. Initially, the mouse seems to be dying, and falls down, which makes Morbius to declare the test as a failed test. Anna. A kid who Morbius is treating conditions worsened, and a nurse comes to call him. After ingesting the artificial blood in the kid, she feels calm again. Suddenly, Bancroft noticed the mouse actually survived, making Morbius to know that the test worked. He then goes to Milo. He meets Dr. Nicholas still taking care of Milo. He excuses them and tells Morbius that, his doors are always open for him. Morbius tells him he has a good news, so they should go for a walk. And after informing Milo of his planned illegal experiment, Morbius receives funding from him to outfit a private mercenary vessel in international waters, with his equipment. In the laboratory, Martin unwillingly ingests him, and ties him tightly onto the bed. He starts shaking seriously but calmed after some time. Somewhere in the vessels are guards of the ship. One of them on board attempts to break into the lab. Martin tells him to leave but he insists he can be anywhere in the ship. Meanwhile, while the cure works, they realize Morbius has vanished from the bed. Bancroft goes to the test room. Meanwhile, the result rather transforms Morbius into vampire. Martin watches his transformation into vampire, and his resultant bloodlust. Only the side of Martin brings some restraint to Morbius, but she is knocked unconscious in the attack by the security personnel. Morbius kills and drains the crew of their blood, after they attack him out of fear. Once his bloodlust subsides, and he regains his senses, she sees Martine on the floor and goes to check if she's still alive. He then covers her with a blanket. A terrifying Morbius watches and erases all CCTV footage of his experiment, and the resulting attack and bloodlust, before contacting the authorities, and jumping overboard with the two remaining vials of his serum. The news about the attack is broadcasted on TV, and Milo sees it. He immediately off the TV as soon he sees Dr. Nicholas, saying it's just an accident. Later that day, Morbius returns to New York, and pays a short visit to Bacroft. 
He then goes to his lab and discovers he now has superhuman strength, speed, reflexes, and echolocation, with his vampire bats, treating him as one of their own. To control his bloodlust, he subsists on his artificial blood, as it gradually ceases to satisfy his needs. Artificial blood keeps Morbius stable for 6 hours, but the window is getting shorter and shorter. Morbius also gets to know that, if he starves himself of blood, his vitals drop dangerously, and his only choice is to drink blood or die. FBI agents, Simon Stroud, Tyrese Gibson, and Al Rodriguez, Al Madrigal investigate Morbius' victims, and figures out his involvement. They visited Bancroft at the hospital for more information, since she was on board. But Backcroft said she has a hard time of remembering what happened at night, making them to leave, since Morbius has been working on a cure for his condition his entire life, and now appears suddenly robust. Stroud then asks her, if she's also working with Morbius, which she admits. Milo learns that Morbius is cured, but becomes furious when Morbius refuses to cure him as well. Milo knows that, the secret to Morbius' is cure is his vampire DNA and his bloodlust, and he has seen Morbius as a vampire himself but wants the cure regardless. While checking on a hospitalized Bancroft, Morbius finds a dead nurse, drained of her blood, believing he was responsible. He attempts to escape before being cornered by Stroud. Stroud appreciate him for his artificial blood, saying it saves his aunt in Afghanistan. Stroud then tells him, he's been looking for a cure his whole life, and he might try everything possible to get cured. He then asks him about his involvement on the ship, but Morbius denies, saying all he does, is to save lives. Suddenly, the report of the dead nurse gets to Stroud, and he tries to handcuff Morbius. Morbius then beats them up and tries to escape, revealing how dangerous he's become. On top of the building, he's then arrested by Stroud. In the cells, Morbius is fully aware that, the artificial blood will stop working for him in a matter of days. In prison, he is visited by Milo, who offers to use his wealth to free him. Upon realizing Milo took his cure and killed the nurse rather, after seeing Milo's walking stick left behind, Morbius escapes prison to confront him, and unrepentant Milo confesses to his bloodlust-induced crime, and urges Morbius to embrace his powers as he has Milo attacks Morbius first, which leads to a banter, for a very long time, causing the death of many guards. Morbius is unwilling to hurt his brother, so he flees, in the process he discovers that he can also fly. Milo starts to keep an eye on Bancroft, as he knows that Morbius will make an attempt to contact her. Bancroft senses this and evades both Milo and the detectives. Morbius contacts her in a bus. He tells her he didn't kill the nurse or any of the guards, and Bancroft says she knows. He then adds, Milo took the serum and he has to stop him, but he needs her help. They then meet at restaurant for some coffee. Morbius is down to 4 hours and 22 minutes of stability, with each ingestion of artificial blood. He explains what Milo has done. Suddenly, he sees a gang member forcing a counterfeit money on a waitress. Morbius follows up with him to know where they make the fake money. He gently asked them to leave, but suddenly, they started attacking him. He eventually scares them off before acquiring their lab as a new laboratory, and he started developing an antibody against vampirism to stop and kill Milo. He also plans to use it on himself since he will become unable to resist his bloodlust. Meanwhile, Milo is actually enjoying his new life and superpowers. He then goes to a nightclub for some drinks, and attempts to talk to a lady. The lady says they've met before but Milo says he's not sure, but he admits she is too pretty. Meanwhile, the lady's boyfriend is around and he starts to attack Milo. With the presence of the people, Milo stayed low and never attack with his powers, but instead making him to leave the nightclub. Not knowing Milo was waiting for the boyfriend outside, he attacks and drains his blood for a revenge. Bancroft goes to the old lab of her and Morbius, and Milo asks her where Morbius is, but she says she doesn't know where he is. Milo angrily leaves. She also then takes few of the things they would need to make the antibodies and leaps. Stroud and Rodriguez go to, to the apartment of Bancroft, but realized she's not there. Meanwhile somewhere in the lab, Bancroft and Morbius gradually falls in love, with him giving her a passionate kiss. Later that day, Stroud and Rodriguez find footage of one of Milo's attacks and, believing Morbius' vampirism to be spreading, release it to the media. Nicholas recognizes Milo on TV, and goes to plead with him to stop. Milo admits he discovers his secret, claiming he's now reborn. Nicholas tells him to then stop destroying Morbius' reputation. Milo tells him Morbius doesn't accept what he is, but he does. Angered by Nicholas' perceived preference for Morbius, Milo wounds and forces him to call Morbius. In the lab, Morbius finished preparing the antibody, 
He then kisses Bancroft and leaps. Nicholas then calls Morbius who arrives too late to save him. Milo once again also mortally wounds Bancroft in order to draw Morbius' attention. Morbius returns desperately to Bancroft. She kisses Morbius and ingests some of his blood, but she dies in his arms, forcing him to drink her blood, as the effects of artificial blood are gone, and he's hungry for human blood, without control. Morbius confronts Milo, and after a long hours of heated fight and brutal battle, Morbius finally summons an army of bats to restrain him, and inject the antibody. Milo dies peacefully, after calling Morbius his brother. The police arrives and Morbius flies off with the bats, mourning his loved ones, and embracing his identity as a vampire, while coming to terms with the fact he is now on the run from the authorities. Unknown to him, a still alive Bancroft reawakens with glowing red eyes elsewhere, having ingested a drop of Morbius' blood, whilst he was feeding on her. In two mid-credits scenes, Adrian Toomes Vulture, Michael Keaton, finds himself transported to Morbius' universe. Having deduced that his transportation involved Spider-Man, Toomes approaches the fugitive Morbius, and suggests that they form a team to help the world. That's all for this video. Thanks for joining me on this journey, through the dark and disturbing elements of today's film. If you enjoyed this recap, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. What did you think of the twists and themes? Until next time, keep the lights on and stay curious.